All righty. Hello, everyone. Hello, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. I'd like to first say Happy Thanksgiving to all of you who are in the USA. The title for this teaching Thankfulness in Love. Whoops, sorry. Thankfulness in Faith and in Love. Some of the verses, 1 Corinthians 16, verse 14, Hebrews 11, verse 1, and today is November 23rd, 2023. We'll just see. I don't expect... Uh, Well, I typically don't expect uh, people, I'd like to see people on here, but with it being Thanksgiving, I know this is going to be different, but from my standpoint, if at all possible, start. apparently I get to look at this through my phone again. Because the comments are not coming up. Renee, happy Thanksgiving to you and your family as well, Renee. Blessings. Oh, look at that. Marianne says happy Thanksgiving. Well, happy Thanksgiving to you too. <laughs> Yes, knowing that this is on, um, this is being done. Oh, come on, Jeff. Blessings and happy Thanksgiving to you, sir. Thanks for tuning in. I hope all is well. Hopefully your business is going good, Jeff. And all in life is going well with you, my friend. So, I have no idea who is going to be tuning in, who can, who can't. Um, but if at all possible, um, I very much like to stay consistent with this and what better time to talk about thankfulness in faith and in love than on Thanksgiving. And so with that, I think we should just get started. Let's look at the one of the verses. It's not one of the verses that I picked for tonight, but it's still going to be one of the verses that we're going to talk about because it just it speaks to thankfulness in faith. It's Romans, so the book of Romans, chapter four, verses nineteen and twenty. Well, there's another Jeff. Jeff and Vicky. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. Well, Jenny, glad you could tune in. Happy Thanksgiving to you as well, you and all your household. What a blessing. Oh, see, there's Stephen. Hello, Stephen. I'm glad you are able to tune in with us. 
Hello there. All right. Not knowing who all is going to be doing this. And it's not like I typically wait for people anyway, because you know what? Who is on here is who's going to watch it. When they're going to watch it, for how long they're going to watch it. So that's just how that's going to work. So let's all go to Romans chapter 4, verses 19 and 20. Let's just see because there I was I was flipping through this. I've got I've got two pages front and back, so four pages. I have I have two sheets of paper with four pages worth of verses, and I was going through them again uh, just before um, I went live on here, and I'm like, oh well, man, we got to talk about this, and we got to talk about this, and we got to talk about this, and I'm telling you, just about every verse. Oh, I missed that one. Oh, see, that's an, oh, we should probably go there as well. All right, so so we have a, we'll see where we're actually uh, directed, but there's a lot, and there's, there is a lot of good verses here. So Stephen says he loves Romans 4, so that's my indication, that's my subtle direction to say, Will you read? Will you just read Romans 4, 19 and 20 so we can get into this? Fair enough, Stephen. I will do that. <sighs> Verses 19 and 20. Without, oh, sorry. I want to pause just to put this into context a little bit so we know what we're talking about. Come on, Renee. Renee says, bring on revelations tonight. So, this 19 and 20 is referencing um, Abraham and Sarah. When Abraham is told that even though they don't have a kid yet, they're going to. Come on. <laughs> Jeff says midnight. See, I mean, there is, there, there's enough verses to, I would say, easily accomplish that. Uh, and so... So we have these two verses, 19 and 20, are talking about Abraham and Sarah, but much more Abraham. So that's that's the he in reference here. It's, it's Abraham. Abram. Abraham. So it says, without becoming weak, in faith, he contemplated his own body, now as good as dead. Since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 20, yet with respect to the promise of God, he did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in faith, giving glory to God. You see this? So we screw things up in our head and we go, yeah, I have faith, but now that I'm thinking about my circumstances, that means I don't have faith. Not necessarily. These two verses, Abraham says, well, the verses that speak about Abraham says, without becoming weak in faith. Abraham contemplated His own body, now as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. So uh, Rene says, total trust in the God of all possibilities. See, so so this thankfulness in faith is not based on what the eye sees, what the ear hears, 
or what your yourself has experienced. This faith is based on, because he says, with respect to the promise of God, he did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in faith, giving glory to God. Stephen said, it's like they're in a hopeless situation age-wise. Oh, without a doubt. See, if you think about this, they've been together for a bit now, and they don't have any kids. And as he said, he was old. Now, as good as dead, right? Contemplating his own body. So if he first looks at himself, which is what we should do, Uh, should might be a strong word, but first we look at ourselves and say, what's going on? Come on. Jenny says, God is outside of what we know of science, in quotation marks. Come on. See, and that's where we get to live. So he says, wait a minute, here now, now let's, let's just... I'm just told that I'm going to be the father of many nations. And that by this time next year, Sarah and I will have a child. She says, all right. Let's take inventory of what that possibility looks like. And he says... Well, let's see, my own body, well, I'm as good as dead, because I'm about 100 years old. So, it ain't going to happen that way. And the deadness of Sarah's womb, we've been, we've been going at this for, for quite some time now, and she has never given me a child. So... So we're really batting zero for two on this one, man. We're just, we're, we're crushing it. Come on, yeah. Stephen says, that's funny how God starts saying, father of many nations, and they're old and barren. It helps us to see where our faith lies, as well as ultimately... It shows us who our God is. Now, can you have thankfulness in this word? Because you can put yourself in this word. It doesn't have to be about a kid. It has to be about whatever you have going on in your life. So now you look at yourself and you go, um, let's see, what's the chances of this happening in my life. Well, let's see. It's an absolute zero up to this point because I've proven it because I have not received this. So the likelihood moving forward that what my past experiences have, have shown me, it's going to be the same moving forward. If I'm only looking at myself. And if I am my own God, where my faith is, I can pretty much guarantee that it's not going to happen. Come on, yep, yeah, Renee, without God, not a thing. So, Abraham looks and he goes, all right, let's see. Let, let me take an inventory of me. Mm, probably not. How about Sarah? Nope. And verse 20 says, yet, with respect to the promise of God, he did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in faith, giving glory to God. 
if you can live in this place where Abraham is. Wow. Think about the thankfulness that you have. Think about the faith, the, the, the thankfulness that he has. He says, all right, let's see. Two things are needed to have a baby. I'm one and Sarah's the other. If my faith is founded on my ability to perform what God has promised, then God doesn't need to promise it. Come on, Stephen says they grew after Hagar experiment. <laughs> Well, I believe I I believe that Hagar happened after they were given this word because they went, well, you know what? Maybe what needs to happen is we need to um do stuff to be able to to have this kid. Let's see. Jeff says, it's a good thing him and Sarah got along that good after 90 years together. <laughs> Something to be said about that. But, but we, I don't want us to miss the fact that we typically have our faith in us, in what our eye sees, what our ear hears, and what we have experienced in life. That is where we put our faith. And we shouldn't, because that's making us our own God. Come on. In these two verses... Abraham is saying, God just gave me a promise that I'm going to have a son. And there's, it's, it's not happening. Based on what I know and can see and have experienced. It starts with without becoming weak in faith. And then respect to the promise of God, he did not waver in unbelief, but grew strong in faith. So what does that look like? That's a great question. I mean, nobody typed it, but it's still a great question. What does that look like? God, I thank you that you have told me that you, God, promised me this in my life. God, I thank you that when I look at myself, there is no way that I can have that in my life. Maybe it's just thankfulness. Maybe it's joy. Maybe it's peace. Whatever. Thank, I thank you, God, that your word that you have told me that I will have peace in my life. God, I thank you that you are the one that provides that for me. Okay? So that's short version. That's what one way that that can look in somebody's life. Mr. Michael. Michael says, Happy Thanksgiving, Todd. Today is the Lord's Day. Be glad and rejoice in it. Come on. 
Happy Thanksgiving to you too, my friend. And so, thankfulness in faith. You want to know if you are your own God? Think about when are you thankful? Come on, Gordy. Blessings and salutations to you, sir, and your family. It says, Aunt Gordy says, I am thankful for you, family. Come on. What a blessing. See? We have this gathering. So, are you only thankful when you get yourself out of a jam, out of a pickle, out of a situation that you find yourself in? Are you only thankful when that happens? I mean, to be honest, you probably are because you should be thankful when you're not in an ugly situation. But does your mind go to, well, I'm glad I did this, and I did that, and I didn't do this. Am I glad that I, am I glad that this other person did this, didn't do this? Am I glad that this, this, this? Instead of, God, I thank you that you opened that door for me. God, I am thankful that you closed that door for me, even though I personally think it should still be open. But you are God and I am not, and so I can be thankful that that door is now closed because you only have what's best for me. God, I thank you that you made a way when there was no way. Come on. Gordy says, live given. It's all been given to you. See, that's where, that's where the... The Matthew 6.33 is such a big deal. The first half of Matthew 6.33 says, First, seek his kingdom. Okay? First, seek being part of the family of God. All right? Then it says, then uh, first seek his kingdom, and his righteousness. Neither one of those are yours, okay? So now, right, Gordy's saying, seek, knock, ask, knock. Stephen says, set your heart uh, which are on the things which are above. When I'm seeking this, What I am doing is coming into agreement with what he has done for me personally. Because that's what brings me into the family. It's not my doing stuff. It's not my shedding of stuff. It's not my starting of stuff. It's not me that gets me into his kingdom. It's not me that gets his righteousness. See, Gordy says, be still and know that he is God. Wait on God. Watch him give it throughout the day. And so, yes, so, so absolutely, because the second person so says, first seek his kingdom and his righteousness and all of these other things will be added to you. 
So if you look at the verses before that, it's don't worry about all the things that the people of the world have to worry about. All right, Stephen, not I, but Christ in me. See, and that allows us that we can say this, you know, like Stephen said, not I, but Christ in me. And we can, uh, when we continue to understand what that means, because just that statement, well, it's not I, but it's Christ in me, I can lose my identity in that. And yet in Christ, I find my identity. So it's absolutely true, not I, but Christ in me, as long as that statement doesn't have me lose me. Gordry said, you know, that's inner peace. Uh, Renee, Jesus is enough. Come on. Absolutely. So now, as I understand that I am part of the family and that my righteousness, because I can say it is my righteousness, is not because of what I have done. I own this righteousness and it's his righteousness that I get to legally have as mine. Now, there's some thankfulness in that. And that comes from faith in him. My thankfulness in faith. So my faith my assurance, my hope is that it's not my righteousness, but it's his that I will be judged on, that I will be judged with. All right, let's see. Jeff says, Romans 4, 7. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sins are put out of sight. Verse 8. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of sin. Come on! That's a good word, Jeff. All right, Stephen says, right. Gordy, my story, his story. Absolutely. Because in this, he says, you know what? I Here's the promise. God gave me this promise. And if I look at this promise and I go, how can I obtain these promises? Eh, you might want to look and see if you are your own God. In Romans 4, 19 and 20, he says, Abraham says, all right, I have this great promise of God. Let's see. Am I able to do it? Well, let's see. Contemplated his own body, now as good as dead since he was about 100 years old. <sighs> Not looking too good for me to fulfill that promise. and the deadness of Sarah's womb. But I have God's promise. You know what happens too often? All right, I've got God's promise. No, here's what I have to do. I have to do this, and I have to stop doing this, and I need to clean this up, and I need to do more of this and less of this, because I am the one that needs to fulfill what God said he was going to do. You know what that does? That should tell you there should be a big old bleak um, beacon of light that says, uh, hello, you are your own God. 
when you think like that. All you have to do is replay that. That that is God says. Here is my promise that I am giving to you. And you say, oh, all right, here's what I need to do to be able to fulfill this. Now, might there be those things that you do? Absolutely. Whole different deal when your action is from the place of already knowing. If your faith is, God said it, so it's mine. That's just how this works. So Gordy says, nope, you just watch and wait. And Renee, yep, Stephen, yep. Jeff, Abraham was counted as righteous by God because of his faith. That's right. God said it. Abraham said, I don't get it, but I'm going to believe you because you said it. God says, that is the righteousness that I'm looking for. Because usually righteousness is to be in the right standing of God. So that means that you need to work at it and you need to do stuff. Come on. Gordy says, Abraham did go ahead of God and didn't wait. That's right, he did it because they were trying to go, all right, well, maybe we need to we need to do this. And it was a good thing that they did in all actuality because then his two sons represented living in the old covenant and under the law with Ishmael. And Isaac is living under the promise, which is what we are. That's the new heaven. Ishmael represents the heaven or the the um, the Jerusalem that is here on earth, and Isaac represents the heaven that or the 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 um, the Jerusalem that um, comes from heaven. The promise. Come on, Jenny says we are perfect in Him, so works are ir irrelevant. Irrelevant. That's right. That's a big word for me. But I'm going to go with, Denny said it, so it's right. So now before we move on, I don't always do this, but let's just see what happens here. Stephen said, I got my Bible out here. Oh, yeah, well, then Gordy did follow his up with, you know, he listened to Sarah. And that was, you know, they were like, you know, maybe what we need to do is just, here's my maidservant and, um, so let's see. Stephen says, verses 2 and 3. Oh, come on here. Let's see. So I'm in Romans 4, verse 2. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about. But not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. That's a good, that's a good word. Gordy says, in Christ. That's right. Now let's see. Jeff says, if God's promise is only for those who will be in the law, then faith is not necessary. then faith is not necessary and the promise um, is pointless. For the law always brings punishment on those who try to obey it. The only way to avoid breaking the law is to have no law to break. Come on, that is such a big deal. So the promise is received by faith. It is given as a free gift. And we are all certain to receive it as well, whether or not we live according to the law of Moses. Come on, Jeff. Yes. That's a good word right there, my friend. I mean, we could just about pack up right now. Done. 
shall we? Spend 35 minutes? No, I just can't do that. There's there's too many other good verses here. But yes, Jeff. More people need to grab that understanding. Right? Jenny says that about sums it up. Renee, I would say, isn't in agreement with me being done. And then Jeff has more in Romans 14 through 17. Given, believe, and receive. <laughs> right, yeah, everybody's like, no. All right, Stephen says, does getting fired up burn calories? <laughs> I will say yes. Because the fired up, see, there's a verse that says that, you know what, if you work out, <laughs> Corey says, there's still pie to eat. Okay, fair enough. We'll keep going. Um, but there's a verse that speaks to, you know what, if you work out, that's good for your body. Nothing wrong with that. But if you dig into what God says about you, not only is that good for your body, it's also good for your mind, it's also good for your soul, it's also good for you as a whole being. So I kind of live on that. And I think it works out okay. All right. Such goodness. Ugh. Let's go eat some pie now, as uh, Gordy says. Uh, oh, see, this is thankfulness in... Faith. Oh, come on, Dean. Thank you so much for commenting so I can say, welcome, brother. Happy Thanksgiving to you as well. I have I have seen that you have reacted, Dean. You've done the thumbs up or the heart or whatever on, on some of the other um, teachings. And so uh, I typically will uh, say hello to those that um, comment on here. Because a lot of times I can't see who is watching this until afterwards. Um, but for whatever reason, my comments on the computer are not playing nice, so I have my phone up next to my computer so then I can see the comments. So, Dean, happy Thanksgiving. All right, people, as Gordy said, let's go have some pie. There's still pie to eat. Let's eat it. Let's go to, we were in Romans 4. Now let's go to Romans 14. Now I will want to point out that we're 30, 38 minutes into this, and I haven't even got to the first verse that I've attached to this. I've only done... I've done very little in my in my sheet, so we'll just see what happens. Anyway, so Romans 14. Come on, right? <laughs> Renee says midnight. Seems like somebody else said midnight too. Um, but anyway, Romans 14, verses one through four. Now this one is a this is a big deal. I mean, all of it is a big deal, but <clears throat> this should hit home with a lot of you. See? All right. Stephen's like, oh, yeah, 14. Oh, yeah. Come on. Let's do this, right? So verses, four, uh, verses 1 through 4. Romans 14, verses 1 through 4. Now pay attention to this and see how it applies to your life and how you can interact with other people, how you can interact, and how do you? Does it line up with, with these four verses? Okay. Now, here it is. Now accept the one who is weak in faith, but not for the purpose of passing judgment on his opinions, See, verse 1. What a big deal just verse 1 is. 
sometimes that can be a little challenging. It says, now accept the one who is weak in faith, but not for the purpose of passing judgment on his opinions. Okay? Examples. I'm just in verse 1. I'm going to uh, have you in my life because your faith is weaker than mine <clears throat> so that I can point out the wrong that you're doing. So I can show you that I am better than you in my faith and other things, but uh, see how goofy that is? It, yep, Stephen says it happens. It happens all the time. But just verse 1, he says, Now accept the one who is weak in faith, but not for the purpose of passing judgment on his opinions. So here's a question for you. Are you able to do that? Are you able to have somebody in your life that has, in this verse, we'll, no, we'll just say a different level of faith in God, in the fact that Jesus is enough. Do you, no, not do you, are you able to have someone that has a different level of faith in God? Are you able to have such a person in your life without passing judgment on their faith. If you're honest with yourself, the answer may very well be no. But hopefully you understand that in, say that again, oh boy, Jeff, um, are you able to have someone in your life that has a different level of faith? in God than you and not negatively judge that person. I believe that's what you asked. Ooh, Stephen says, ouch. You know, Courtney says 1 Corinthians 4.13, and Stephen says uh, need uh, to be uh, patient. So Gordy says, you know, we're building up the church, edifying the body by bringing them to the fullness of Christ. But we can't do that if we say your faith sucks. Your faith is useless and worthless and garbage. Let's see. Let's see what... 1 Corinthians 14.3 says. 1 Corinthians 14.3 says, But one who prophesies speaks to men for edification and exhortation and consolation. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Yep. Good encouragement, Stephen says. And Stephen, when things get heated, Jeff... That's a big challenge, and I think uh, no would be an honest answer. Come on, yes. 
and and Renee says honest challenging sometimes and so that's and so so in here right in unshakable foundation for us in UFFU here we are to encourage and to be encouraged How will any of us Jeff, that's a great question. I'll get to it in a minute. How can any of us grow if I am not willing to be around somebody that's not in the same faith with the same faith that I have? So Jeff asks, does that make people unequally yoked? Well, it can. This unequally yoked, I would say, would be not the level of your faith, but the level of faith faith in wanting to understand. All right, Stephen says, unequally yoked to me means those um, that are unrighteous with the righteous. It wouldn't jive. Um, there can be an element of that, Stephen. However, How else will somebody that is unrighteous ever experience righteousness? And so what I can do is you have faith. You have a greater faith in, all right, Jeff. Okay, you asked the question, does that make people unequally yoked? So... I can yoke myself with you and you have a greater faith in an area or an aspect of God than I do. But I may have a greater faith in a different aspect of God than you. So if when we are yoked together, we're not unequally yoked. If both of us understand, we each are weak in faith in certain areas. Now, there does come a point where if you, no, I'm going to say me. If I think that I'm all that, that I have a strong faith in all areas of that pertains to God. And then I might allow you to enter into my presence of how great thou art. Okay? Come on. Thanks, man. Jeff says, I got, um, I got you now, buddy. Thanks for explaining that. And so if, if I believe that I have strong faith in all things, <laughs> and you obviously would have weak faith, then if we yoke ourselves together, well, that's probably not all that good. Okay. <clears throat> Gordy says in Galatians 6, 1 through 5, um, 
Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you are a spiritual. Restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Um, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted, bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. Yes, Stephen, your highness. Renee, great explanation. Come on. Yes. So, all right. So now we've only gotten one verse in on Romans 14.1. See how this? So if we look at this and we go, it says, accept one who is weak in faith, but not for the purpose of passing judgment on his opinions. If you accept me into your life in whatever manner, you are to do it in a way that you are not passing judgments on my <laughs> on my belief, my faith, the strength of faith that I have. Come on, Renee says, not midnight, but till nine. <laughs> Come on, Gordy. Gordy says, I accept you, Pastor Todd. And I accept you. It says, accept the one who is weak in faith, but not for the purpose of passing judgment on his opinions. Can, if you can live there, is there thankfulness? Yes, on both sides. Because if I am the one who is weak in faith and you accept me in your life and you don't pass judgment on my, on my opinions, well, I have thankfulness. Now, I have one person. In a world with 7 billion people, I have one person that it can accept me for me. I can be thankful there. And if I am the person that accepts one who is weak in faith, if I'm not the one that's weak in faith in this verse, but if I am the one who accepts the one who is weak in faith, now I get to have thankfulness because now I have another person in my life. See, both of those are a win. I accept the one who is weak, but not for the purpose of passing judgment. So whether I am on either side of that. Come on. Gordy says, hey, man. Renee says, come on. And Stephen says, I like that. So do I. That's good stuff. The sad thing is, I'm telling you, the sad thing is, there are very, it's been, it is my experience that there are very few that will accept one who is weak in faith and not pass judgment on their opinions. Very few. My personal experience, I'm not sure if I can count it on two fingers. People that I personally have experienced in my life that don't pass Judgment. Hopefully, the people that have experienced me in their life have experienced verse 1. Hopefully, you do not see that I pass judgment on your 
faith. Hopefully you have experienced the fact that I have accepted you, and it's not your weakness in faith, it's that your faith is different. It's all good. Uh, Stephen says, my experience is that I get along well with weak than the strong flesh um, headbutts. That's right. Very, yes. And typically, Stephen, Stephen um, I will say that those that butt heads are because both people believe that they are their own God. Okay, self-righteousness, the law, yep. So, all right, so now let's continue with Romans 14. Oh, there's such good stuff here. So now I'm going to go back and read, start at verse 1, and then maybe I'll get through another, maybe I'll get through two verses this time. We'll see. It says, now accept the one who is weak in faith, but not for the purpose of passing judgment on his opinions. One person has faith that he may eat all things. But he who is weak eats vegetables only. All right, I got to stop just for a just for a, a just a, a short bit. Verse 2 is saying, all right, let me put this in a way because if I talk to you in a spiritual realm, you're just not going to get it. It's going to be, it's, it's, it's going to not fit inside your brain. Your noggin is not going to handle it. So he says, all right, I know everybody understands food. So I'm going to explain this, this weak in faith from a food standpoint. He says, all right, one person, we're only going to talk about two people here. One person has faith that that person can eat all things. So that's the faith. I can eat everything, whatever I want, whenever I want, to the quantity that I want. I can eat everything. <clears throat> and it's all good. So that's my faith. And another person, that person has faith that all they can eat is vegetables. So he says, here's the comparison. This, this is what we're looking at here. One person, and you can apply it not to food. I mean, you can apply it to a food. But you would just apply it to, to, to whatever it is that you want. One person has faith, a great deal of faith in this area. Another person only has enough faith that says, I only believe only part. <laughs> Steven says I'll eat my pulled my smoked pulled pork elsewhere. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna get to that, but there's something to be said about that. Um, but the other person says, all right, so if the first person says there are there are a list of ten things that I have faith in in this area. I have all ten, I'm there. The other person says, I have faith in two. Not all ten. I completely disagree with the other eight that, that that's possible, that you can do that. But my faith is in those two things. Absolutely. Game on. Let's do this. Okay? All ten and only 20%. So that's what verse two is, is helping us to understand this in a way that we can get. We understand food. But it can be applied to all aspects. Okay, so here again. Verse 2 says, The one has faith that he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats, only, uh, eats vegetables only. Now verse 3. The one who eats... So all 10, eats everything, anything. The one who eats is not to regard 
with contempt the one who does not eat. And the one who does not eat is not to judge the one who eats. For God has accepted him. Who are you? Who are you to judge the servant of another? To his own master he stands or falls, and he will stand. For the Lord is able to make him stand. See that? The one who eats all ten things. Ten on the list. Game on. If you're not doing it, if you if you don't have all ten, well, you're useless and worthless and garbage. No. He doesn't look at the one that just goes, you can only eat two. With contempt, he's like, no, he's like, don't do that. And the one who eats just the two instead of the ten, that one is not supposed to go to the other one and go, you realize that number seven is really bad for you. You realize that number eight, you definitely are not qualified to do or to have or to eat. You know that the reason that you're having a, a bad time in your life right now is because of the fact that you eat four, five, and six. You know what? If you would stop consuming 10, your life would be a whole lot better. Look at me. I only eat one and two. And my life is fine. Stephen says, makes me think of Paul saying, why make comparisons since Jesus is in you and Jesus is in them and um, as well as in me? Come on. See, that's the word. See, that's what we're trying to get to with this, Stephen. That's what we're trying to get our brain to accept. Jesus is enough for me. Which means he's enough for you, and you, and you, and you. Come on. And when we can get that, you go, well, yeah, but, 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 you don't know what he did to me. You don't know what she did to me. You know how mean she was? She looked at me funny. Whatever. When we can live our life based on the fact that Jesus is enough, that means that Jesus is enough. Period. Now, can you have thankfulness? <clears throat> In Romans 14, 1 through 4. Yes. Think about the faith, thankfulness. Yes. Amen and amen. Live given. I have been given life. You have been given life. I live with thankfulness in faith and in love. Oh, come on, Stephen. What an encouragement. Stephen says, I'm loving this spiritual Thanksgiving food. Renee, amen and come on. So, this thankfulness in faith. Come on, Gordy says, I have been forgiven. 
So now we get to walk that out, and it doesn't mean that we walk over people. Gordy says, I have been given an inheritance. And now what that allows us, what that inheritance allows us to do, right? I have been given faith. That's a big deal. Let's go to the first verse that I connected with this teaching. 1 Corinthians. Oh my goodness. Let's see. Um, Peter. Peter from Uganda. I think you've been on here before, Peter. He says, praise God, I am Peter from Uganda and am an evangelist by the grace of God. I thank God because I'm able to join you, Pastor. Come on. Thank you for joining us. Thank you that I'm still going for right now. So we'll just see um, what we got going on here. Gordy says, I have been given freedom. Oh, yeah. Okay. Gordy have been given pies. See? Oh. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Yep. Jeff confirmed, yep, he has been on here before. Yep, that's that's what I thought, but uh, yes. Gordy says, I will be given a room in my father's house. Absolutely. Because that's because each one of us are his child. So now here, if we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, Verse 14, yeah, Stephen says it's prepared, that's right. And the great thing is that we do not have to figure out the way to get there. Right? Jeff says John 14 says so, Gordy. Oof. So, but we don't need to figure out the path to get to our father's house. Jesus says, I will go and prepare a place for you. Then I will return to come and get you to bring you there. Ooh. Yep, the door. Gee, oh. All right, so 1 Corinthians 16, verse 14. So now, if we're living in this inheritance, if we're living in this freedom, if we're living in this given, what we are given, this is what life looks like. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 14. This is thankfulness. Here's what it says. It says, let all that you do be done in love. That's, period, that's it. Let all that you do be done in love. Thankfulness in faith and in love. Let all that you do be done in love. Come on, Gordy says, faith, hope, and love. Love is the greatest. Love is unconditional. And the challenge is, for many of us, we don't understand love, or we think we understand love, and the only love we understand is a worldly love. And then we try to apply it to this. Come on, Stephen says, how do you do that when you're tired? Fair enough, that's a fair question. Well, let's see. If we 
gather around what love is. So 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7. Gordy says, go to the Father for rest. But let's just see how tiring love is. How exhausting love is. How draining love is. Let's see what love is. Love is patient. So can you try my patience? Well, you can. But more times than not, it's because I'm coming from patience from a worldly understanding rather than a heavenly or a godly understanding of patience. Because if I understand that Jesus is enough, how much more patience can I have with you? How much do you do that wears on me and tires me out if Jesus is enough? Gordy says, do you have margin for people? Uh, not like most. Not like I probably... Many people that you would come into contact with. Because typically what will happen is you'll say, I'm going to draw a boundary, I'm going to draw a line, and you're going to be able, I will allow you X. And if you consume X or if you cross X, then we're done. I mean, that's, I, I think basically, Gordy, that's, I think, what you're, um, what your question is. And so Stephen says, how do you do that when you're tired? How do I show you patience when I'm tired? Well, is Jesus enough? Yes, Jesus is enough. That should be your answer. Yes, he is enough. But enough for what? All right, how about enough for this situation? Oh, man, I can say Jesus is enough, but I don't know if he's enough for this situation. Come on, Pastor, that might be a little bit much. Well, is he or isn't he? Yes. Come on. He is. Or he says everything. So now, everything, Renee says, Fair enough. So now Stephen says it's like you're trying and they headbutt or become defensive. Yes. Renee, everything Gordy, he gives us examples for all situations. Yes. So here's the deal. Stephen, if you are in my life trying to explain something to me to get me to a certain place, and it's just exhausting because I'm just this stubborn mule that is just not agreeing with you and button heads with you and just not not going the, the direction. Come on, Jeff. Now, you just hold that thought for a minute. One of the things, Stephen, that, that I want you to do is think about why are you doing what you're doing. Too often, the reason why you and I are butting heads is because you want me to agree with your position. Jesus didn't need me to agree with his position. Because what happens is you come into my life and you want validation that your belief is right and you'll get that validation if I agree with you. So now you continue to come at me 
to change my weakness of faith to come into alignment with yours. And when I'm not doing that, it gets you tired. Now, this isn't just for Stephen. This is for all y'all. When you come into my life and you're doing it in love, you will also know when it's right to be done. Right? Because this is what, uh, let's see, Jeff says, how about Jesus is enough to give me a break from this situation and gives us rest until we're both equally ready to deal with the situation? Yes, because love is patient. If I cannot interact with you in love, well, I need to step away from the situation until I can. Let's see, Gordy responds to that's a reflection of them you just speak truth in love with grace sometimes they just need a hug oh hugs are awesome salt and light renee says love them enough to walk away lovingly yep it can be a challenge um, gordy having exceptions sets up or having expectations sets us up for disappointment absolutely See, that's the challenge. What happens is I come into your life, and if I have the expectations that you are going to change, meaning you are going to come into alignment with me, and then you don't. Oh, my goodness. What a disappointment. Then I look at me, and I go, well, what did I do wrong? What should I have done differently? How could I have fixed this? And and now my identity, my faith, is wrapped up in you. That's just crazy. And yet it happens all the time. Oh, come on. Steven says, I like that. Aligned. Oh, see, Gordy, then you're a noisy gong otherwise. Amen. When you don't have love, all you are is just, you're just making noise. You go, I'm going to give you the truth, whether you like it or not. Here's what it is. That's not truth. You go, yes, it is, Todd. I'm going to beat into the into them the fact that Jesus died for them, and gall darn it, by the time I'm done, they're going to agree. Knock it off. If it's not done in love, then it's useless and worthless. Come on, right? Renee says, you know, I've done that before. I don't know about quite the beating somebody up, but, you know, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's see. Gordy says, uh, them seeing that you're not coming at them with an agenda, meeting them uh, where they're at. They trust you um, to then speak into their life. Yeah, see, and so this is this is this. Can we be thankful in how we're living life? Because it's let all that you do be done in love. And I'm telling you, people, it's man, okay. Love is patient. So I know that when I'm doing this without an agenda, that I can do it as long as I'm supposed to. Okay, do you catch that? When I am interacting with you, 
and I do not have an agenda for this interaction. I know, I have faith that this will happen for as long as it's supposed to. Because that's how it works. So now Stephen says, 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13. So the, the, the verse before, what I have down here, says, um, said, Qu quit, ye men, and be strong. Then let all your things be done in love. Come on. So here we go. So love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant. Does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Does not take into account a wrong suffered. Does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Yes, Gary says be meek. Renee, Jesus is enough in all things. Yes. So now our position of let all that you do be done in love. If I have the truth, but I don't do it in love, that truth is useless. It's actually harmful because you misrepresent God then. And that's what happens too often. So we're looking for faithfulness, or uh, uh, thankfulness in faith and in love. Thankfulness in faith and in love. Gordy, be and do everything from being. All right, so that was the first of the verses. It's, uh, um, I let all that you do be done in love. And then there's thankfulness in that. You can live, you live in this, this position of thankfulness when you are living in your life saying, let all that you do be done in love. And that's not a worldly love. That's a 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7 love. And you can shrink it up to say 4 and 5. Not that the other ones are bad, but let's start somewhere. So 4 and 5, love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant does not act unbecomingly, does not seek his own, is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered. So there's nine. That's a pretty big deal. And that does not seek his own is my faith is a 10, and if you're a two, my job is to get you to a 10 in faith. No! No! Your job is to not judge the two, but to accept him in your life. Come on. Renee says amen, and Gordy says love casts out all fear. I think I have that as a verse, as a matter of fact. If I don't, I should. Yes, I'm pretty sure that's in First John. We'll see if we get there because we're already, we're, we're barely, we made it halfway on the first page in almost an hour and a half. So if that holds true, we've got three hours on the first page. Three, six, nine, twelve hours. So if we went straight through, we'd be looking at somewhere around 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. 
<laughs> We're not going there. Come on. <laughs> Woo! Yes, barely scratched the surface. Yes, 24 hours of pie. Come on. What does Jeff say? That's true, but a lack of faith holds on to fear. Yes. Nine AM. See up yep, there. Oh, see, there you go. Yeah. Oh. Um, all right. So Come on, yes, do it. Steven says, I'm still here and not even close to staggering. <laughs> All right, well, I want to see New Year's Eve. You know, we might have to look at doing something like that. Uh, maybe what I can look at is um, doing something uh, more like a Zoom call rather than um, just having me, but maybe we can um, do this, but then um, we can have other people talk if they want to, just as long as you don't um, hoard the conversation. And so, uh, zoom, 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 zoom. All right, so we'll see about that. But anyway, let's get back to this, because this teaching is thankfulness, in faith and in love. So when we're looking at thankfulness, when we're in a situation, can we be thankful? Do we have thankfulness in our heart like Abraham did? I want to just touch on the book of Ephesians is, is oh, it's a fantastic book to read. Oh. On the sheets that I, that I um, that I send out, and if you would like to be added to get the verses, I do it every week. Every every week that I have a teaching, which is just about every week, right? We're six we're six years in, and. I don't know for sure, but I think in those six years, I think I missed somewhere around four, maybe five teachings. Otherwise, every week, it might not be exactly on Thursday, but every week we have a teaching here on um, here on Facebook. And then I upload it onto YouTube as well. So come on, see, love Galatians. So I have Galatians chapter 1. When I was putting stuff in here. Oh, but so, sorry, before I forget. So if you'd like these verses, um, message me with your email. And I'll add you to my list of um, email list. I do a blind copy so that you don't get the whole list of everybody that's on there. Um, but you still get the verses. And as long as I remember, because Michael has asked me uh, to do a PDF version as well as a Word version. And so um, I'm getting better at doing both of those. So then you Apple people can um, can also open it or whatever. All right, so let's see. So Stephen says... I'd like to think that we do have a thankfulness heart and God is working um, in us outward. Right? Psalms 100, enter his gate with thanksgiving. Yes, and his courts with praise. I did a teaching using those verses not that long ago. I don't remember if that was part of it, but I know those were some of the verses. I don't remember if I attached that. Because Jesus is the gate. And yet we stop at the gate when the whole deal is to get us into the presence of the Father. 
Marianne on becoming uh, teaching on our, on our upcoming. You know, Gordy, um, this isn't necessarily her thing. She's done one. Um, she has other aspects that God um, speaks with her on. And so, so Ephesians 1, such, such goodness. I'd like to read all of it, but based on time, I want to hit a few highlights, and we'll just see how much we can get through just the book of Ephesians, and then we'll see what else we're going to do here. So in Ephesians 1, Verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, you and I, with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. So that's a good word right there, just verse 3. There is some thankfulness in Christ. So in faith, in love, there's thankfulness there. God the Father, God our Father. So we're not talking about Jesus God, we're talking about Father God. God has blessed us, you and I. Do you believe it? With every spiritual blessing there's the key spiritual blessing you're thinking physical worldly blessing now we might get those as a ripple from our spiritual blessing but the blessings we receive are every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ yep Gordy says eternal life. I love it. Yes. That's the foundation for our blessing and for us living in this blessing every day. But now with this spiritual blessing, that can translate into worldly blessing. Not a, not a problem. There's, there's no leap with that because that's a truth. But first, you need to understand it's a spiritual blessing. Okay? There's thankfulness in that because God the Father has blessed us. It's not something that you strive for. It's a free gift that's given to us. I'm just telling you, the heavenly realms are open. Just saying. Okay. Verse 4 says, Just as he, God, chose us in him, in Christ, before the foundation of the world. So that's before all, right? That here, that we would be holy and blameless before him. Now, which is more important in your life? To know that you are stand before the Father holy and blameless or what that person says about you or thinks about you or believes about you. That from a worldly standpoint is true. I mean, let's face it, you kind of suck. You lie, you cheat, you manipulate, you control. Tell me those aren't things that suck in a person. And really try to defend the fact that you don't have these qualities to some level, to some degree, in some aspects of your life. Lie, cheat, control, manipulate. If you're your own God, that's not a good place to be. Verse 5. 
verse 4 says, he chose us. In Christ. God the Father chose mankind who chooses to believe. To have faith in Jesus is enough. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. So is that before all of the crap that you're doing, that you have done, that you will do? I mean, come on, let's get real. If, wow, right? Stephen says, I'm listening too. Stephen also says, wow, come on, Gordy. If you trust you, don't lack anything. I'm not sure. So if God chose us before the foundation of the world, was this was this choosing before all of your garbage? Yes, please say yes, it was. Was it before all of your shortcomings? Was it before all of your missteps and mistakes? Yes. God chose you in Christ before the foundation of the world, here, that we would be holy and blameless before him. Um, I don't know. Thankfulness in faith? Because you need to have faith to believe that. Let's see, and then we're gonna then we're gonna keep going here. So let's see. Gordy says 139, 16. Psalm 139, verse 16. Uh, your eyes have seen my unformed substance, and in your book were all written the days that were ordained for me, when as yet there was not one of them. Come on. Yes, Renee says, amen and amen. And Stephen says, without him, none of this exists. That's right. And so so with that comment, right, Stephen says, without him, none of this exists. And yet, how many of us still try to achieve it without him? Or we give him credit after we've done it. So we've done it. But we're like, you know what? I'm just going to give this to God and say he was him. It was all him. It'll be okay. What the? Right? It is written, right? Gordy was like, it is written. He knew us before we were formed. That's what it says in here. Our thankfulness in faith. Because you need faith. Because that's not something you can see. Do you believe that you are holy and blameless before the Father? Do you believe it? Um, I hope so. Okay. I can work with that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, let's make sure that you're not too cocky in your own belief. Right? Gordy says being born again helps. Yes. Jeff, no. Honestly. Honesty. I love it. That's where when we go, nope, don't believe it. So then Jeff, all right, Jeff says I'm a sinner saved by grace. In that statement, sinner is more valuable, carries more weight than what God says here. God says that you are holy and blameless. 
because he looks beyond the things that you have done in this life because he made this deal before the foundation of the world. And for some reason, we think we can screw up the deal that God made. How powerful do we think we really are? Come on. Now, it's a true statement, Jeff, that what you said. You know what? When I look at myself not having God, I don't care how good I am, I'm still a sinner. And thank God I am saved by his grace. Absolutely. Stephen says, and now we ain't no sinner, but we are saints. Yes. And then just as God sees the whole picture and we can only see the moment, right? So now I am, Gordy says that you're redeemed. Yes, yeah, see, now when my life is based on me, when I am the foundation, when it's based on what I see and what I've seen, what I hear and what I've heard, as well as my life experience, then it's me. And I always get to struggle with believing that I am enough for God because I will never be enough for God. Does that make sense, Jeff? And all y'all, when we have this understanding, when we have this belief that my life is based on what I see. And some and some of us, Stephen, see or uh, hear with our eyes. When that is our experience and how we live life, we can never live up and we always feel like we have come short. But when we can change that and say, no, wait a minute. Here it says that he chose me. He picked, Jeff, he says, all right, Jeff, here's the deal. You're part of my family. Jeff, you're part of my family and I am picking you before I even create you. Come on. Now, his word that says that he chose us before the foundation of the world, <clears throat> that we would be holy and blameless before him, that overrides what we have done. At least I have faith that it does. Because what he says is. Period. What God says is. Well, what he says here is that he chose us. So now can I have thankfulness in that? Absolutely. Because he says that we would be holy and blameless before him. Well, now, Todd, how can you be holy and blameless if you're screwed up and you're a sinner? The easy answer is because God said so. If you don't agree with it, take it up with him. Come on. Yeah. Stephen says, let's make Jeffrey a blameless, holy dude. See, and we get to make him that way because he is. Come on. Yep. Renee says, God already has. God already has made him 
a blameless and holy dude. Come on, as God was making it. See? That's where our thankfulness is. So now, let me, I want to hit a couple more verses and then I'll, we'll go up from there. So now, at the end of four, for whatever reason, they decided, oh, see, Gordy says freedom. That is, this is freedom. There's a freedom in Christ <clears throat> that people that live in the flesh will never accept, never understand, never get, never experience. Ugh. So verse 5 should start two words before it does, but it doesn't. So it says, in love, and then verse 5, he, God, predestined us to adoption as sons through Christ Jesus to himself. We are sons to the Father, not to Jesus. Come on, right? Stephen says, where uh, the spirit of the Lord is, there's, a, there's freedom. Yes. All right. It says, in love, he predestined us. So the Father predestined us, you and I, to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself. Uh, Stephen, we're in the book of Ephesians. Ephesians. E. P-H-E-S-I-A-N-S, -E the book of Ephesians, yep, chapter 1. Right now I'm in, I'm in verse 5, 5, 6. In love, so thankfulness in love. In love, he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestows on us in the beloved. Come on. The Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Such good. Come on, Gordy says Ephesians 2, 9. We're there. Um, um, Gordy, why don't you just type out what Ephesians 2, 9 is um, and speaks in identity, I'm guessing, Stephen, right? That's mind-boggling. It is mind-boggling. This is what we get to have faith in or not. This is... There is thankfulness in faith. There is thankfulness in love. Right here, in love, God the Father predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself. Oh, come on. Gordy says that we're sitting in heavenly realms with Jesus. Yes. As he is, as Jesus is, so also are we right now. But, so in this, God the Father predestined you and I to adoption as sons through Christ, through Jesus Christ, to himself, to the Father, according to the kind intention of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, which he freely bestows on us in the beloved. Such a big deal. Yes. Right? Revelation 4.11 from Stephen, it says, For his pleasure we are created. We're already seated with Christ. Gordy says Colossians 1.16 is 
everything was created to glorify him. Come on. So now here, if we're staying at thankfulness in faith and in love. Yes, Gordy pointed out the fact that it is, it has already happened. It's not something that we strive to get. But now here, so at verse 7, so Ephesians 1, 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of, of his grace, which he lavished on us. Now, you want to talk about grace? Ephesians 1, verse 7. That, right? It says, in him we have redemption through his blood. So now, if you think you're a sinner, how can you think you're a sinner and have redemption? Which one is more powerful? Which one dictates your actions in life? Are you a sinner? Or are you redeemed? Well, Todd, I'm a sinner that is redeemed. So you still want the title of sinner. Because you don't understand, you don't believe that God has made you, that Jesus has made his bride without spot or wrinkle. Your sins are no more. You go, well, Todd, I just screwed up. Just, you go, okay. Fix it. That's all fine. Which one carries more weight? What Christ did or what you did? Pick one. Choose wisely. Because right now, you're choosing the fact that you did something outweighs what Christ did. There's no thankfulness in that. There's always a game of trying to play catch up. And that's not ketchup and mustard. It's always the it's it's always a game. It's you live a life of trying to gain something that God has freely bestowed on you, freely given you. And you only understand that when your faith is in what he has done is greater than what I have done. Ketchup and mayonnaise. Well, see, you're talking a different story now. Right? Josh is getting... Gordy, Thanksgiving gives life to the miracle. Come on. All right. Where are we at? Oh, boy. Um, let's see. In, in Ephesians, we have been allowed to made given the mystery of God. Big deal. Um. Come on. Yep, more pie. Yep, I get it. Stephen says, when they say Jesus is enough, makes me think of God saying to Paul, my grace is suffic uh, sufficient, will suffice. Yep. Such good stuff. There's Renee. Yeah. See, man. How about this? Uh, let's see. Uh, verse 11, it says, in him... Also, we have obtained, we, you and I, have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to his purpose, who works all things after the counsel of his will, to the end that we who were the first to hope in Christ would be to the praise of his glory. So we have obtained an inheritance. That's good stuff. Thankfulness, the title again, the focus of this teaching, thankfulness in faith and in love. Come on. Num, num, check five. Uh, all right, verse 13, it says, In him 
you also have a having oh sorry again in him you also after listening to the message of truth the gospel of your salvation having also believed you were sealed in him with the holy spirit of promise who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view to the redemption of god's own possession to the praise of his glory oh miss valerie hello you've been missed thank you for tuning in thank you happy thanksgiving to you as well thank you for fitting us in on this wonderful thanksgiving day i know it's it's getting late and i should be wrapping up but i barely i just kind of pushed through the first page of four pages no I'm, and i'm not going to do it i'm not going to carry this into next week um some of this stuff you're going to have to just read on your own and see ask the question do i have thankfulness in faith and am i living in love where i can have this thankfulness and are other people thankful because of your faith and your love that's ephesians 1 let's see where am i at oh my goodness i should really just skip right through it and get right to the back page um Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17, it says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, verse 18, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and then 19, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. So that's good stuff. Uh, Ephesians 4. Uh, in verse 1, it says that you may walk in a manner worthy of the calling which you have been called with all humility and gentleness with patience showing tolerance for one another in love being diligent to preserve the unity of the faith uh, unity of the spirit in the bond of peace oh, such goodness all right let's walk in love this speaks about in in ephesians 5 Colossians chapter 2, verses 1 through 17. Good stuff. Oh, Brother Kevin. Kevin and Shelly. Oh, I love you guys. Miss you dearly. And happy Thanksgiving. Kevin says, uh, good evening. Hope all had a blessed Thanksgiving. I hope you guys did as well. There's such goodness, but I do want to wrap this up. We are coming up to two hours already. Um, so understand if you're living your life and you're going through a trial, James chapter 1, I want to read this and then I want to move on to the last verse that we have. So it says, so James ver, chapter 1, verses 2 through 8. Now check this out. It says, consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials. <laughs> I laugh because Kevin just says, hmm, midnight. Out of question? See, we could. I mean, very easily. We could go back through this and easily hit midnight. But it says, consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials. Now, now, if I just pause there for a moment, we had a conversation about this, that 
typically it's understood that this is talking about the big heavy stuff. This is the big things that are that that come against you in life. Yes, Renee, you did say 9 a.m. Yes, you did. I, yep. Um, but this is count consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials. So this various trials is in little things as well as big things. Now, let me continue with this. It says, now here it says, why? So answer me why I should consider it all joy when I'm going through a trial. This makes no sense to me because it goes contrary to, to how the world lives. Well, verse 3 says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And then verse 4, and let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. So consider it all joy when you encounter various trials. Why should all I have joy because of the trials? We're not joyful. Come on, not staggering, no food coma, the pies are good. Well, he, Stephen didn't add that, but he did have the not staggering and no food. So it's not that we have joy because of the trial. We have joy because it reveals where we have our faith. Because if you're not like Abraham, like I read in Romans, your faith is going to be weak when your faith is in you and you come into a trial. But here he says, consider it joy. Because what's going to happen is that that trial is going to reveal to you where your faith lies. You go, it lies in God. The only problem is that you think you're God. And now your faith is shaken, and you blame it on the God above when you've been yourself, your own God this whole flipping time. Because I'm telling you what, when you have, when, when your faith is in the Father, God the Father, when your faith is in the Father, then you can endure the trial. Then you have this perfect and complete result because you understand that you are lacking in nothing. Come on, Renee says UFFU, an unshakable foundation for us. Us is a big deal because it's not me. It's us. It's this unity of the body. Come on. All right. I gotta keep. Verse 5 says, But if any of you lacks wisdom, so if I pause, well, lacks, lacks wisdom in what? This is lacking wisdom in this trial that you're going through. You're like, I'm not sure how to get out of this. My faith is in you, God, but... I'm lacking wisdom in how to navigate this. I'm not navigating it myself, but I'm lacking wisdom in the navigation of this trial. Okay, here's what verse 5 is saying. He says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all 
generously and without reproach. And it will be given to him. Come on, if any lack wisdom, right? Staggering is like a boat in a wild wave. Come on, absolutely, Stephen. So here, so that, he says, if any of you, while you're going through this trial, and it is being revealed to you that your faith is in God, not in yourself. Then you're like, all right, I got, okay. You know what, God, you you, you, you give me this. Now I'm going to ask you for some wisdom, God. I need a little help here. Verse 6, no, verse 5 says, Ask God who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But now verse 6, he says, now, now understand, your faith has to be in God, not in you. Your faith has to be there. Because if it's not, here's what's going to happen. Verse 6 says, but he who, or but he must, Ask in faith without any doubting. For the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that man, that person, that human, ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord. Being a double minded man, unstable in all his ways right yeah see stephen says that he won't hold back he won't that's what his word says kevin how quickly humans forget it's not them it's in the power of christ come on right so that's so so that's something to hold on to thankfulness in faith James 1, verses 2 through 8. Such a big deal. Right, Renee? No fear, no doubt, just faith. It's going to work out the best for me. Because it has to. Because that's what God says. That's what Jesus has already done. And so it has already happened. Even if my situation doesn't appear for it to be, the case, it has to be my friend Mike and I say this, you know, it's like, well, why? Well, because it has to. That's right. It has to. That's it just that's that's the way it, it has to. Come on, Jesus. Right? And last, Stephen says, and last week, Jesus thank that the Father heard. See? Yes. Amen, Stephen. Yes. Jesus prays to the Father, and he says, God, I thank you that you heard me. God, I thank you that you always hear me. And then in another spot, it helps us to know that if and when God hears us, we can have confidence that we receive what he hears from us. Renee says, God turns good all things meant for evil to those who love him. Yes. All right. Such good stuff. All right. Oh, my goodness. Um, Come on, Kevin, right? The great I am thankful. Yes. The last verse that I put in with this teaching is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things 
not seen. Is that your understanding of faith? Or do you only have faith in things that you do see? Have seen. Have experienced. Is that where your faith lies? If so, you are much more of your own God than you want to believe. Just saying. There isn't, there isn't condemnation with that. There is this revelation to help you to adjust who you have your faith in. <clears throat> oh, come on. Jeff says, I have evidence of him hearing me on the Trace Diaz Facebook page. I posted a testimony from this last week of keeping an open connection with God through prayer. Amen. I read that, and it's absolutely true. Sometimes we need to deal with it because that's what we're being directed to do. Other times, we need to just rest in the fact that he does hear us and has already established the things that we need when we need them. Done. Okay. I really need to start landing this plane. So again, Hebrews 11, verse 1 says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And more in Hebrews 11. It's such good stuff. But I want to just touch a little bit, and then I, then I, I really um, should wrap this up. Thankfulness in faith and in love. 1 John 4, 7 through, we'll see. Seven, I have 7 through 21, but let's see. It says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. By this, the love of God is, was manifested in us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his love to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. Good night, brother. I really need to wrap this up. Thanks for hanging on as long as you did. Good night, Jeff. Jeff says, good night, my friend and brother. God bless you and everyone here in our UFFU family. Good night. I'll read this and then I will wrap up. So, Verse 14, we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. We have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. God is love, and the one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this, love is perfected with us, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love. 
but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves punishment, and the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If someone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen, cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should love his brother also. Come on, Stephen says we ought also to love one another. Amen. All right, everyone. Hopefully you have received some encouragement from this teaching. Hopefully you can see spots, places in your life that need a little bit of adjustment maybe. Or you have this encouragement that your faith is in God instead of you. Come on. Hopefully this has been an encouragement for you. I know you all have been an encouragement for me and continue to be an encouragement for me. All right, you know what? Here's how we're going to end this. God, I thank you for you. God, I thank you for all the freedom that you give us, for all of your righteousness, for your kingdom, for the good that you give us freely, that you chose us before the foundation of the world. God, I thank you that you take us deeper into the things of you to help us understand our identity in you. We don't lose who we are. We gain an understanding of who we are when we are living life through you and with you. God, I thank you for the thankfulness that we have in faith and in love in you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, Renee says, thank you, Pastor Todd, for your beautiful teaching tonight. Such good stuff. God continues to keep me in awe of him more and more each day. I am thankful for all you do, and I will have to catch you up on all he has been showing me. Happy Thanksgiving, and God bless you and Marianne. Such good stuff. Come on. Kevin says, thank you, brother. And Marianne O'Flanagan. Come on, Renee. Thank you, God, for everything. Valerie says amen. Renee says amen, amen. All right, everyone. Thank you for this longer teaching on this holiday. I will say, let's do this again. How about in about a week? <laughs> um, let's see Stephen says I love you all but refusing to share my slice of pie to another makes me a liar no it doesn't make you a liar but what happens when you so when you eat this slice of pie when it's a heavenly slice of pie now you actually get to share with others because you can't help but share God's love. You become God's love to other people. So in that reference, this is eating of the pie, right? Yes, we are to bear fruit, not bear. 
but bare. So with that, thank you all. Thank you for sharing these videos, these teachings. Thank you for all the comments. Thank you for watching this whenever you get a chance to watch this live or uh, when you when you tune in like you're tuning in now and it isn't live. Thank you. Thank you for those of you that watch this on YouTube. Sharon, Nate, um, others that right now aren't coming to mind. I apologize. Um, thank you for the reactions. All that is all good stuff. So with that, I will say thank you all and bye for now.